several facts on the Yeti, let's take a look at the fabled beast. These crude drawings sketched by Dr. Klaus Buchart in the early 30s were based on his research among such diverse groups as the Tibetan Sherpas, Eskimos, and nomadic Siberians. Their structural similarity to man is evident. This I'm certain is why so many skeptics dismiss the Yeti as a primitive cultist or modern charlatans cavorting in costumes. Nonsense. The Yeti exists as surely as you and I. One trait is universal. The Yeti has the uncanny ability to disappear into thin air as soon as modern man approaches. There he goes again. Now, for tomorrow's expedition, I'd like you to all assemble in front of Wrigley Hall with luggage and equipment at precisely 8 a.m. We'll proceed in my van as we've scheduled it. How far is it to Werner's place? I doubt that we could do it in less than um, six hours or so. So please, everybody, get a good night's rest. Uh, what's the action like on Boot Island? Beg pardon? Well, I mean, uh, what's the place like? Where do you go at night? Well, it's not quite the type of spot that a young fellow like you would pick to spend a holiday. Boot Island is rather a desolate and lonely place. It's way off the beaten path. Well, I guess that is about all this time. Oh, a moment, Keith. Snow in April, what is this? Well, whether or no weather, I'm still going to that party tonight. Me too. What about Keith? I guess so. Wait a minute. Please, are we still going tonight? Hey, I'm sorry, but the old man pressed me into dinner. I'll try to catch up with you later on. You don't mind going alone, do you? Oh, Keith. Well, what could I tell him? He's a lonely old guy. I guess he needs company. Well, where are you going? Some specialty restaurant. He's been telling me about it for a long time. Hey, I'll catch up with you later on. Say about 10.30, okay? Mr. Sinclair. <laughs> Do we call you doctor now? Oh, thank you. That's cute. Oh, who invited them? What's wrong with them? Did he come to take out the garbage? Oh, that is it, right? Yeah, just hang on to your glass. Better give me a drink. Get me a drink. I've seen him before. Who is he? You've probably seen him cutting the hedges around Collins Hall. His name is Spencer St. Clair. He used to be a teacher here, but he went bananas. He tore up the study hall. They were going to fire him, but the dean gave him a job on the maintenance staff. You know, he was one of Prowl's kids, too. Mr. St. Clair? I'm Urban Kelly. Happy to meet you. Yes, I understand you're used to studying with Dr. Krell. Well, Krell. Krell. Yes, uh, and 
guess what? I'm going on his field trip tomorrow. No, you're not. No field trips. Tomorrow. They said there would be no more field trips. Oh, sir. Now, don't get so excited. That's all over with. That's all in the past. Here, dear. Did you enjoy the salad? It was fabulous. Well, this whole place is fabulous. And there's nothing like this in Biloxi. <laughs> I'd like to bring Karen here sometime. Very few of the students patronize this place, Keith. It has a rather exclusive and very unique clientele. <clears throat> and the best wine cellar in the city. <coughs> uh, permit me to order. They have a specialty here that I know you'll enjoy. Well, which one? Well, it's not on the menu. It's something the chef prepares for very old customers. It's rather an odd specialty that uh, I know someone of your sophistication will find most delectable. Tell Richard that Dr. Pearl will have his usual uh, dish. Two portions, please. <laughs> We can't have another outburst. Outburst? Me? Give vent to this oppressed poison in my brain? <laughs> never, never. Why should I? After all, I've had seven years to forget that I saw three of my best friends killed. That I teetered on the brink of insanity for years. Some say I'm still mad. Perhaps I am. Yes. But I'm alive. And Pearl is alive. Alive and still at it, didn't you hear? He's going again. I wonder where this time. I bet it matters. Hudson's Bay, Alaska, <laughs> Siberia. You can count me out for this one, bro. I've had my little expedition. I've got my battle star. And which... Lucky soul will return this time, hmm? Lucky that is to be alive. Even if it is to live a life such as mine. Bro, well, of course, always returns. Yes. Always. Spencer, I asked you to stop it. Please stop. To the pay you should stop. Stop listening to Pearl's madness! What day is this? Hmm? The 18th? It was precisely seven years ago to today when I was a young, bright-eyed student just like you. There were four of us, all at the top of the class. Paul, you get to please the great Pearl. God, how foolish we were. No. How pitiful it was. Where did he take you? Where did you go? After the same thing you're after. Prell's thing. That beast. That abomination. We arrived in that godforsaken village at Hudson's Bay. Right after the worst blizzard the natives had seen there for years. Luckily, Pearl knew people there. He always knows people. Wherever he goes. He took us 10, maybe 20 miles from that place into the wilderness. We were tired, we wanted to return. But he drove us on. Keep going. You can still hear him. Keep going. Finally, when he came to a crevice, we stopped to rest. Pro went on ahead. For 
perhaps a half hour or maybe an hour went by. And then we heard it. We thought Pearl was a goner. We rushed blindly towards that spot. Perhaps to help. Perhaps to satisfy our own curiosity. Perhaps... God to see it. And did you? It was near and dusk. And the blinded other glint was in our eyes. managed to escape. The next thing I remember was coming to in an infirmary somewhere. They said I was out for three days. Apparently, Pearl dragged me back. At least that's what they told me. What happened to Dr. Prell? I didn't see him again. He left for the university before I regained consciousness. We haven't spoken since then. But he knows I hold him guilty for the deaths. But you can't hold Dr. Prell responsible. <laughs> this is excellent. What is it anyway? Oh, it's a combination of wild meat. The natives call it gin sung. Oh, waiter, two stifters of brandy, please. It's been years since I've met a boy of your caliber. Seven years, to be exact. It's a pity that other fellow just didn't pan out, didn't live up to expectations. But I know that you're going to be different. I anticipate great things from you. Oh, thank you. That looks fine. Keith? success. I'm so sorry. Sorry? About Spencer. He is a dear friend. I hope he didn't upset you. He does carry on about that episode. I suppose it was dreadful for him. Actually, it's April I'm most sorry for. She was expecting such big things from Spence. Good, Good night. night. Good night, and I hope it stops snowing. <laughs>
further is it to Boot Island? Is that where you're bound? Why, anything wrong? Take those girls up there too? Why yes, they're my students. Suppose you know what you're doing. Check your oil. Is something wrong? Sonny boy, I make it a practice never to interfere with folks when they're bound and determined to get someplace. Because no matter what I say, they're bound to get there, and they're bound to get what they went there for. May not make much sense to you, it makes sense to me. I hope to see you folks on the way back. Take care of yourselves. Take care of those girls. My friends is Dr. Carl Werner. Carl, allow me to present my students. This is Karen Hunter, Karen. Lynn Kelly, Lynn. and Tom Nash. Tom. And this young man is Keith Henshaw. Oh, <laughs> an extreme pleasure. Is it still out there? Have you seen it? No. But I heard it clearly two nights ago. Your Yeti is waiting for you still, Ernst. Tom, you're in there. 
Keith, this is your room. Oh, wow, if I had it. Oh, I know what you mean. Where's my little case? I don't know, I guess Tom has it. Now, dinner's at seven, so don't forget, don't be late. Are you still mad at me? You didn't say two words to me the whole ride up. Now you're doing the same thing here. Look, I told you about last night. I couldn't get away. Well, you could have called. I lost all track of time. Before I knew it, it was midnight. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to unpack. Well, where do you want your bag? Hey, you got your bag. Oh, you better think. Hey, I don't believe this bit. You don't believe it. What do you think I feel? Hey, it looks like you packed for a weekend at Aspen. Oh, what do you expect me to bring? My books and typewriter? Oh, this is supposed to be a serious field trip. Oh, come on, Keith. You don't really believe we're going to find anything out there. Well, Dr. Prell thinks we might. Oh, Prell's got a thing about snowmen. The trouble is that people believe that garbage of his can get themselves in trouble. You know that guy St. Clair who clips the hedges over at the university? Yeah. Well, he went on one of Prell's expeditions a couple years ago. According to him, three guys got killed. Now, I don't know whether it's true or not, but there must be something to it. I heard those stories, too. Well, the guy drinks. Uh, I knew I forgot something. <sighs> Prevents frostbite, my boy. Very good care of me. Oh, Keith. Well, what happened to you? I'm sorry I acted so stupid. It was my fault. Well, let's not talk about it. You must be laughing, Crow. Is it time for dinner? People <coughs> say that he's downright nasty. Yeah, he's mean and he's gruesome. He'll make your threesome into a twosome. Now's your chance to make a break. Uh, don't let a moment go to waste On the prowl Hear him howl Here comes the Yeti now That was excellent coffee, thank you Has he been this way since birth? bizarre that to this day it amazes me that he's recovered to the extent he has. The tales, the tales. I won't go into it now, it's much too involved. A weaker man would never have survived. But look at him. He's strong as an ox. 
He works from sunup to sundown, and he obviously never complains. And on top of that, he's the finest native cook I've had the good fortune to find. <coughs> Is something wrong, Tom? Nothing a good stomach pump wouldn't cure. Tom. No, that's all right. Some of these Indian dishes do take a bit of getting used to. I noticed most of you having trouble getting through the meal. But I had Laughing Crow prepare it in honor of Dr. Prell. Oh, it was delicious. <laughs> Keith, I noticed you enjoyed it, too. Jin Sung, wasn't it, Dr. Werner? I thought that was an oriental dish. You know it? Oh, yes. Keith is becoming quite fond of it. The Orientals excel in preparing. Oh, I didn't know they had grizzly bears in China. Actually, it is indigenous to many cultures, including Latin Crow's own tribe. But I know we're not here to discuss cooking. Tell us about the noises you heard. Do you really think that it is a Yeti out there? It's the damnedest thing, Ernst. If it isn't a Yeti, I can't imagine what it could be. Its roar is unlike any animal I've ever known. It's too high-pitched for a grizzly bear. It's more raucous than a moose. Sometimes it almost sounds like something human, like someone wounded crying for help. I've seen the track, although it had been muddied by rain. It's inordinately large, with the middle toe extended, not unlike the Yeti you described in your papers. You said you heard it two nights ago? It was about four in the morning. For some strange reason, I woke up. I came downstairs, went in the kitchen to fix myself some tea. While I was drinking the tea, I heard it. Very far off, but quite distinct. It was growling. I turned off the lights to the house and waited. About ten minutes passed, and I heard it again. Much louder. jacket on, grabbed my rifle, and slipped quietly into the yard. It was bitter cold. Clouds covered the moon, but I could still see the tree line 50 yards off. Then the maddest thing of all. At first, I thought it was my own excitement. I thought I heard my own heart beating, but then I realized it was another's heart beating much more rapidly than my own. It grew louder. Whatever it was, was getting closer. I began to detect a rank, foul odor in the air, and I had the distinct feeling that I was being watched. It was the most unnerving experience of my entire life. Suddenly, a cloud passed away from the moon, and for one split second, I thought I saw something, a shaggy figure standing just at the edge of the tree line. Instantly, it was gone, and with it went the aroma and the sound of the racing heartbeat. The next morning, I went to that spot. It hadn't snowed during the night, so I was fairly certain I'd find a set of tracks. Except for the single set of prints I described, there was absolutely nothing there. Whatever it was must have escaped through the trees. Well, didn't you at least get a photo of the tracks you found? I don't have any equipment here. Carl, I'm more convinced than when you called me that you've got a yeti in your woods. And with the help of my young friends here, we're going to find it and photograph it and prove to the world that this fabled beast does really exist. Do you have a chart of the island, Carl? Yes. I have a copy here of the map my late father used to give to his suppliers. Laughing Crow, the tray. The island is uh, approximately six miles by four. Keith, would you like to? Shaped rather like a potato, I always thought. I can't imagine why they call it Boot Island. We're here in front of this mountain. The bridge is here. There's another mountain here in back of the house with caves carved into the uh, facing of it. <laughs> Most of the island is covered with uh, dense woodland, as you already know. How wide is the bay to the north? Two or three miles, maybe. Mm. I'm convinced that he came across the winter ice, and right now he's trapped. 
And I'll bet he's in one of those caves. Well, then let's make that our target for tomorrow. Right. And to get an early start, we've all got to get better. So, what do you say? We all three times. <laughs> Hey, what's the big idea? Hey, good night. Good night. I don't think I'll sleep a wink after that story. Oh, we'll be right next door. If you get scared, just knock on the wall once and I'll knock back twice to let you know I'm there. Hey, Tom, can I knock on your wall? Anytime, Lynn, baby. See you at 6.30. And remember, the heartbeat you hear may not be your own. <laughs> you know, I'm really looking forward to this weekend. I think Tom's finally taking notice of me. Oh, it's still Tom, is it? I thought I caught you giving Dr. Werner the eye. Yeah, he's kind of cute, too. <laughs> Take a breather. I hope it's still hot. a deer up there. Maybe I can bag it. Then we'll have something decent to eat instead of that bear pie. It's called Jin Sung. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you can eat it. I'll catch up to you later. take a look over that ridge. I'll bet that's where the caves are. Rest easy, Gang.
I drift off, I'd hear those gunshots. Any word of Tom? Still early. Are you and uh, Tom good friends? Oh, I'd like to think so. You know, he has his eye out for a lot of girls. I can't imagine that with a girl as lovely as you are around. People say I have a good sense of humor. Uh-huh. Is that all they say? Oh, please, Doctor, and I can't see anything without my glasses. Are you and Dr. Crow old friends? Friends, but not old. We met a few years ago at a faculty convention. We share a number of scholarly interests, although his enthusiasm about the Yeti far out distance is my own. I say if there are such creatures, leave them alone. They obviously don't enjoy human contact, so why harass them? Dr. Pearl, of course, is intent on capturing one of the beasts and finally proving that such creatures do exist. My own vice is uh, North American flora, herbs in particular. Lately, those traditionally found in the Indian medicine man's bag. Strangely enough, the Yeti crosses both of our paths. It's deeply rooted in Indian folklore. Do you remember me mentioning Laughing Crow's accident? Yes, uh, Karen and I were dying to ask you what happened. Yes, well it happened seven or eight years. Laughing Crow, sit down. It's all right. Sit down. It happened seven or eight years ago when we were still living on the reservation. He claims he was attacked by a half-human, half-animal beast that carried him off to its cave, intending to use him as food at the proper moment. Expecting to be devoured at any time, he escaped on the third night and wandered through the woods for two weeks until he found his way back to the reservation. Unfortunately, his tribe does not believe in the Yeti. And after severely beating him and cutting his tongue muscle, they cast him out. So you see, he hasn't spoken a word since. Oh my God. Kara, check out the ruins down by the quarry. Keith, you stand guard here. cold out there. I've got to get some air. I mean, I just don't feel right standing around doing nothing. <laughs> well, stick close to the house. I wouldn't go into the woods alone if I were you. I won't. I just want to take a walk around the place. All right. Okay. There, that's better. It's his leg! It's his leg!
chewed for over 30 years. You think a Yeti killed Ann and Tom? I'm convinced of it. Didn't you see the claw marks on her throat? Didn't you smell the foul air? Let's get out of here! When we're so close... Close the box! Close the hole! Getting killed! Be sensible, Karen. We'll be safe if we all keep our heads. I think you're both out of your head! You're mad! Do you know why I'm here? Why I'm doing this? Do you know what people say behind my back? Karen, I need proof. I need solid proof that the Yeti exists. My entire reputation is at stake in this, Karen. I don't care about your reputation. Give me the keys to the van. I can't do that. The majority rules that we stay here. Key? Can I see you a moment? Look, I don't want to interfere in your affairs, but can't you do something with that? Don't you think we'd better call the police? It's a good idea. It'll take them a little while to get here. Good timing. Phone it out again. Now, Keith, I want you to listen to me closely. This can never be of any use to Tom anymore. Wait a minute. If you're going to do what I think you're going to do, be realistic. We came here for a purpose, and there's no turning back now. Carl, have you got a sturdy bear trap? No. I have a, a fair-sized wolf trap. Where is it? It's in the basement. Then get it. Right. And bring the longest length of chain you've got. Well, Keith... Wait! Exactly what are you thinking? I aim to capture that beast alive. We're going to stake it out right where he killed Lynn. But well, what about Lynn's body? Won't he go after that? No danger of that, Keith. Lynn's body is safe. Where? In the greenhouse. But if that beast is as hungry as I think he is, he'll hit the trap. And he'll hit it tonight. How's this? this long. Hot coffee will warm you off. I'll get you a cup. But first, tea. How are you? Honey. I'm perfectly fine. That's a good girl. I knew you'd see it our way. No, I don't see it your way. I think what you're doing is totally barbaric. Doesn't Tom mean any more to you than a piece of bait to hang on a hook? Well, Dr. Prell said that Dr. if we... Dr. Prell, Dr. Prell, Dr. Prell, I'm sick of Dr. Prell. What about you? What about Keith Henshaw? What do you think? Let's go. I don't like this place. I don't like these people. Keith, this has all happened before. People get killed following him. It happened on the last trip and it, it's happening now. Oh, Keith, please, let's get out of here. I'm so close. I'm so close. Oh, I'm so close. Do? I know what he needs. Here. 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 What happened? Came at me too. 
quickly. It knocked the rifle out of my hand, and in an instant, it, it snatched the meat out of the trap before it even sprung open. I lunged at it. I dug my fingers into its fur. It's, it was as cold as a corpse. It bolted toward the trees. I could see it as it was chewing the flesh of Tom's leg. Suddenly, it stopped. With a great shiver of its body, it shook me loose. I, I fell against the rocks. I could see the, the Yeti loping off into the forest with the meat in its jaws. Then it is a Yeti. Yes, and far more awesome than any we have ever heard or read about. Yes, and it has all of the characteristics. The height, the fur, the strength, the fetid aroma, the subhuman face, the teeth. But what shook me to the bone was its heartbeat. Loud, incredibly loud pounding away like an air hammer. That's it! That's the thing I saw. Oh, please. I thought I was dreaming, but I guess I wasn't. Please, let's get out of here. Get out? You must be mad. Now that we have the proof that it actually exists, and a rare one, too, and we have the tools to attract it again, and if we're resourceful enough, Capture it alive. What tools? The bait. No, not Lynn. You can't have Lynn. I won't allow it. You have no right to touch Lynn. Sinclair was right. You're a madman. You killed his friends and now you're killing all of us. Will you kill me? Or kill Keith to try again? Now you've gone too far. I don't think I've gone far enough. Karen's right about one thing. If we fail with Lynn, there won't be another chance. Keith? Carl? I think foolproof plan this time. Just give me a minute to sketch this out. Hmm? Yes. Huh? Trees. Wire.
Yes, Karen. I saw Tom. Yes, I know, my dear. You've been screaming that for hours. No, I touched him. He was he was in the greenhouse. I I, I no, I, I dragged him out. I thought it was Lynn. Honey, you've had a terrible dream. That's all it was. This was no dream. It was a body in the greenhouse. I thought it was Lynn. I wanted to hide it so you wouldn't feed it to the bees. I, I tried to drag it out of the greenhouse, but the canvas came off. It was Tom. I, I know it was Tom. Karen, you haven't left this house the entire night. I'm a light sleeper. I'd have heard you if you'd gone past my door. I didn't go past your door. I found a different way out. I went through the wine cellar. Through the wine cellar? Into the backyard? That's right. Well, that's impossible, Karen. That door has been sealed for 30 years. Oh, my God, I must be going crazy! I didn't dream it. I didn't. I didn't! I'll show you! Ooh. Ooh. Karen, this is ridiculous. I guess this proves it's not Tom. Honey! Stop treating me like a child! Oh, stop acting like one! Dr. Prell brought you on this mission for a reason! And up to now you've been acting like a, a whimpering, self-pitying little girl! Grow up! Keith! I think it's time to go. the trip wire and the buzzer goes off, the flash should blind the beast for at least 10 seconds, giving me ample time to pump three of the anesthetizer slugs into its midsection. If they fail to knock it out, Keith, you have live rounds. You know what to do. Carl, the second you switch the lights on, out on the slope with your camera. Are you sure you want me to take photos? I, uh... I'm all thumbs, really. I can hear you well enough, Dr. Warner. If anyone is going to take pictures here, it's going to be me. Karen. Now, don't get me wrong. I still think you're all crazy. But I'm doing this on one condition. That when it's all over, we leave this place. Whether we succeed or we fail. You have my word. And mine. Well, good luck. Well, let's go. Thank you. 
Swing that light over there. Come back, you fool! Carl will return any minute. He'll want his dinner. state of shock. Well, one more exposure should do the trick. What do you suggest? Well, we've pulled practically every trick out of the bag. Maybe we should just kill her like the rest and be done with it. No, Carl. No. The code of the votary demands no body bruises. No. She must be frightened to death. I have an idea. I don't think so. Put your hands up. Really, Keith, I thought you were asleep. I mean what I said. Put your hands up. Don't be reasonable. Put them up! Try me. Be reasonable, Keith. The shells in that rifle are as ineffectual as the ones in Tom's rifle. <laughs> 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 Ernst, would you uh, move the van? Our guests will need the space to park. Okay. Hello, operator. Would you please get me the cozy rest motel? Yes. Hello. Cozy Rest Motel. Yes. Would you please ring rooms 210, 114, and 150. Right. That's rooms 210, 114, 115, 324, 326, and 421. Right. Would you call all those rooms and tell them that the breakfast is on at the appointed time? <laughs> Thank you. 
To you, Ernst Perl, we of the votary owe this night. To you, dear colleague, goes the tribute to the friends of the Covenant gathered from round the world to sup at your table. We conjure all good blessings on your person, and we invoke the beneficent presence of the Lord Belbaris on this assembly. In seven years since I last held this mitre, it's been my privilege to join my companions in salutation to the one among us who has been granted the commission of our faith. Madam Winchester, could we ever forget that avalanche? <laughs> and to think we thought that Mountain Clyde was passe. <laughs> Baron Udovsky, your performance at the Grand Prix, so grand, and so many accidents. <laughs> King Ojibamba, your safari service has furnished us with many victims. And you, your highness, for the incredibly clever dispositions of your late father. I can't help but feel that he's here with us at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> This is your job! Sonny, sure glad you flagged me down. I would have sure hated chasing you. Forgive my manners. My friends, uh, this is Keith Henshaw. A sensitive, intelligent, and perhaps I'm wrong, but a most promising young associate of mine. A bit given to heroics, I'm afraid. That was a nasty blow you gave me, young man. I should have killed you! Where's Karen? In time. In the meantime, let me present the esteemed members of Le Jean de Trois. You remember Algamar? Uh, nice to see you again, young man. Jean de Trois. That's the finger people. This must be some sort of devil cult. <laughs> I see Dr. Prell has left out part of your education deliberately. Our forebears were affiliated with the votary, a popular cult of Satanists who were driven underground in 17th century France. Much of their mythology was meaningless ceremony, but it served its purpose for our schismatic brethren. One of the many rituals was one that brought unbounded benefits to those who participated. To those who practiced the manger le chair you men. Cannibals! We prefer carnassier. It's less droll. But the yeti! The beast! Oh, the beast is in the closet. A device conceived by Ernst years ago to draw suspicion from our activities. It has been sequestered in the caves and utilized only when needed. You see, Keith, the movement is extremely fond of what you might call theatrics. To kill solely for the purpose of satisfying the appetite would be uh, primitive, or to use your word, cannibalistic. We like to uh, put on a show. Each of us, in turn, supplies food for the rest at the annual Saturnalia. Each host is given a doua as a sign of recognition. This year, the honor fell to me. I last hosted the Brotherhood at an exquisite banquet in Hudson's Bay. Oh, you remember St. Clair's story of that episode, Keith? He supplied an excellent blind, I must admit. You mean it was that costume again? But that's impossible. I mean, the, the sounds, the, the attacks, the how. There are two suits in that closet. One fits me, the other Carl. When our dual presence was demanded, modern technology supplied the answer. Then it was you that hit me with that rock. No, no, that was Carl. He was the Yeti, naturally. Laughing Crow operated the light network in his absence. But Karen was right about Tom. Ernst, enough of this. The clock is struck. Let the Saturnalia begin. Laughing Crow, bring me a chair. 
This is MCH-16 North America calling MCH-1 Corsica. MCH-16, MCH-1. Come in, come in, Corsica. Hello, North America. Is this Prell? Count Canero. Oh, all wish you good health, joy, and long life on this most auspicious of nights. Have you been successful? It is my honor to report complete success, my lord. Then my choicest blessings on you, your group, and on the Lamb of Antari. Were there any complications? Well, the one selected to carry the uh, Yeti legend back to the people has discovered the truth. But uh, we may succeed here nevertheless. I believe he can be persuaded to perpetuate the Yeti legend for us. He's already been initiated, uh, unwittingly to be sure, but I don't believe he'd want his friends and family to know he's enjoyed the very thing he may condemn. What are you talking about? Jinsong. Unless he accepts the honor, he will not live to see the sun rise. Madrid and Buenos Aires are calling. Send them our best on Saturnalia. I will. Bon appetit. And Lynn. Tom, it was all a charade. There is no yet. Karen! She sleeps the sleep of the Lamb of Antares, the unbloodied, unblemished victim, the exquisite delight of the Jeanne de Noir, the untouched sacrifice to Saturnalia. The knife never touched her body. She was scared to death. Happy Crow! On guard!
houses. Or do you feel that it's just silly superstition? Perhaps you'd better think again. Superstition. You should have believed. <laughs>